Okay, good afternoon, everybody. So my name is Adnan Adnani. So I'm Chinese, Chinese Muslim. My wife today was here. So uh, say how, hi to everybody. So always the first presenter, uh, very takut and guburu. Okay, so so basically MBG is uh, uh, selling fruits. So in Bahasa Melayu, menjual bobohan, Bahasa Cina, sanggalau. Okay. So selling fruits must have a strong missions, visions, and core value in the organizations to build the 20 outlets with 200 employees. So this is something that is uh, done uh, difference compared those to our traditional selling fruits. So this is my company's core value. So you can see Nilai Teras, honesty, respect, and determination. This is the core value that is practiced in the whole organizations from top to the lowest, everybody in the organization. So this is a very important foundation of the company, including the mission and visions of the company. So a lot of companies that is have mission and vision, including core value, but just hang in the wall. So if you practice it, everybody will be go into the one big arrows and then will be same alignment together with your whole organization. So my responsibility in the organization is develop mission, mission, core value in the organizations. So a little bit start about history, about myself, a little bit similar to our strong ladies uh, from TOC, start with a humble beginning of my mom's and grandfather selling fruits in the Petaling Street, in the uh, Pasar Pudu, and then they are passed to me the same business model. You can see exactly the same business models. So after I drop out from the high school, my SPM fails. <laughs> so, Sankalo, start with a first day I'm doing business, 30 ringgit I get. So, and then slowly I need to transform myself to have a mission on year 2000. I have one mission before our Prime Minister launched One Malaysia. I have one mission, one PASA, one MBG. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so I tell my employee, one PASA, one MBG, they say, boss really like to dream. And so I say, yes, dare to dream, then you will achieve the result. So by year 2000s uh, onward, I have uh, that dreams. So I jump out four times, okay, fail. The fourth time only successful in NSK Salayang. So on year 2004, suddenly the ladies, there's an old customer, 10 years buying fruit with me, suddenly say, Anan, come to my shopping mall selling fruit. I look at him, wow, so rich, this lady come to your shopping mall to selling fruits. <laughs> so at that day, I go to his shopping mall. There's a LRT station, KLCC there, so Avenue K. So year 2004, I opened my first outlet. So next year will be a 10 years anniversary and that shopping mall complex. So today's, I think some of you here is a uh, MBG customer, am I right? Maybe can, thanks for your support. I need to see. <laughs> okay, so this is our uh, outlet that's opening. Year 2010, I use the same philosophy again. Same philosophy. Year 2000, I jump out four times from my Pasak to start uh, another outlet. Fail four times. Okay, so the fourth time, successful. So year 2010, I use the same philosophy. I jump out to China. So fail again. So year two, 2012, I close up the shops. So year 2013, my second round jump to Indonesia. So again, I do the same thing in my life. The same circle that is called entrepreneurial spirit circles. <laughs> okay, so this is my company, visions, core values. Uh, that is a very important. So I practice that every day. I do have a communication days every quarter from the people from top management 
to the lowest level. Everybody compulsory come into the communication days. So from there, I drive the whole organization with a very simple philosophy. Mission, mission, core value. This is what I do in my organization. Thank you very much. Hello. Thank you, Mr. Anand. So now, let us invite the next finalist, Mr. Adrian Wang, to present about his entrepreneurial journey and his business. Let's give him a loud applause. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Adrian Wang. Uh, I started this company in uh, 2001 called CBD Properties. The reason actually I started this business uh, because of my dream uh, about 13 years ago, I was a civil engineer. I was a civil engineer for four years, but I still was working and the salary is very, very little. So I decided to become a salesperson. So I chose real estate. During the time my parents actually fully objected, I, cho I chose this industry because they, they look at this industry is like coffee shop broker. Broker. Huh? Selling like every day, sitting in the coffee shop, talking about property, just talk, how to sell, how to buy. You know, because in my hometown, Port Dixon, a lot of brokers do the same thing. So they actually not agree me from civil engineering going to the, going to the uh, real estate agent. So I want to prove them so many years. So I keep on have a thought of how to change this kind of uh, illegal broker or so-called broker concept into an uh, organization into a uh, international company. So over the years, I'm very thankful to uh, all my people and uh, all my management team and agents. So we was awarded uh, by the Bloomberg Television in 2010 and 2011. And also awards from my uh, uh, Malaysia Institute of Real Estate Agents over from the year 2011 2012, and this year actually we are participating as well. And I was uh, one of the uh, real estate agent of the year in Malaysia in 2011. And over these years, uh, the media also cover up uh, a lot, of cover uh, a lot of the news about the properties that invited me and uh, our CBD to feedback on the uh, property outlook. So those are uh, media from the I Property. Uh, Ho Ching Soon, Astro Awani, The Star, and the BFM uh, Radio. So currently, CBD, we have uh, 400 world agents so, and the negotiators. And uh, all these uh, top agents uh, keep on consistently achieve their annual targets. Some of our agent negotiators uh, earning more than half a million to one million target. And uh, we also associate with a, lot of a few uh, real estate agents in other countries like Singapore, uh, Korea, Australia, UK. And we also affiliate with um, Polo A, MM2H, Sandra is al It's Bohat. It's also one of the subsidiary company who are uh, authorized by the government to apply this in Malaysia, my second home. And recently, we also joint venture with one of the company from China. Uh, this Hope Fluent, they are the largest estate agency in Guangzhou and listed in Hong Kong. So we form a company called Hope CBD Reality Consultancy to sell, uh, sell property in China and uh, bringing Malaysia property and selling to China. And uh, in future, we might sell China property in other countries. And this is how some of our division. We cover a lot of uh, uh, sectors. So we bring retailer. Like MBG is also one of our clients uh, to the shopping. Or we, we, we propose a shopping place to the retailer. And we also do corporate leasing to the MN, MNC company. These are the, uh, the results actually we have done in the client valley. And project marketing actually is our whole, our core business. So over the years, these past seven years, when I started CBD, my focus is project marketing. So besides doing the sub-sale, like renting and selling individual housing, I give solution to the uh, developer. Partly because I, I'm, I was a civil engineer, 
I was invited to sit in to give ideas and how to give um, the design and all sorts of the technical uh, concept to the developer. Besides that, I have a 400 over workforce to sell their property. So we also got the award from Bloomberg in 2011, uh, one of the very successful projects in Taman Equine. And we were also invited uh, to market this Sunway Vivaldi in Mount Chiara. And there are a few projects that actually is a very, very good, uh, giving a very good result to the developer over these few years. Like some of the projects, uh, the developer has actually not selling. So once they appointed us, we turned around the project that's something that like Tropicana Churras. We turned around in eight months, uh, create 100 million to the developers. And the other one is the Tropicana PJ. Also, uh, within six months, we turned around 260 million sales for Dijaya, Aquaris, and Pacific Star. So I would like to thank you, my management, and my negotiators, and all the people with me. Thank you very much. Without them, uh, CBD will not be today. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much for Adrian Wang. Such an inspiring sharing. Okay. Now let's, uh, let us move on to finalist number three, Dato Kelvin Q, to present about his entrepreneurial journey and his business. Please give him a very loud applause. Selamat petang, semua member-member JCI. Rakan-rakan dari seluruh negara, kawin lain bing, taja siapa hal? Okay, saya memperkenalkan diri saya yang dengan ringkas. Minta maaf dulu, saya tidak boleh cakap bahasa Malaysia yang baik. Saya akan campur sikit bahasa Chinese. Okay, saya nama saya Kevin. Saya pengasas dan pengarah MK Cotton Growth of Company. Saya Mulakan bisnes ini tahun 2005. Sekarang sudah 8 tahun. Saya rekomenkan diri saya dari dulu. Saya hidup dalam kemiskinan. Ibu bapa saya bercerai semasa saya kecil. Saya dibesarkan oleh nenek saya. Saya waktu masa 13 tahun, saya macam MBG juga lah. Saya mula kerja sambilan di pasar malam. Menjual buah lah, sayur lah. Sehingga habis pelajaran sekolah menengah. Sebab dulu masa kecil memang masa um, rumah miskin. Uang tak ada jadi kena kerja part time selepas sekolah. Ketiga berusia 17 tahun, nenek melapak penyakit angin amat. Jadi saya habis sekolah, saya kena jaga dia, kena kerja part time juga. Setiap hari lepas habis sekolah pukul 2 sampai pukul 7, saya bekerja sebagai penghantar gas. Ingat lagi itu masa, uh, jadi itu hantar gas memang masa, itu perasaan sangat susah. Kita naik satu motor, bawa dua tong gas, uh, kita jalan. Kalau itu lori, lori melalui kan, kita punya itu motor goyang juga. Itu perasaan saya ingat sama hari ini. Sebab itu, selepas saya habis pong fai, saya berusaha sangat kerja, lajin sangat kerja untuk mau cari diskri, diskri masa depan saya. Berusia 19 tahun, saya menjadi penjual kain di Kalai Tekstai, Nagoya. Mengambil gaji RM700 satu bulan. Uh, itu masa saya simpan banyak pengalaman. Dalam ini bilang tekstai. Saya melihat banyak orang yang ada di dalam perusahaan ini. Kenapa? Karena saya rasa ini adalah perusahaan yang banyak orang yang ada di dalam perusahaan ini. Jadi saya melihat, jika anda ada kemampuan, jika anda ada kemampuan untuk menghasilkan perusahaan ini, anda boleh menemukan banyak orang yang ada di dalam perusahaan ini. Dalam perusahaan ini. Okay, titik perubahan hidup mula dari pelan perniagaan pertama saya ini MK Keten. Saya menjual kain macam MBG cakap juga orang panggil saya Mai Pulau. Ah, tahun lepas saya ada join JCI ini gambar tahun lepas saya dulu sini juga. Saya ambil bahagian dalam JCI CYA juga dan saya berjaya memasuki top ten finalist. Tetapi saya tidak masuk ke top three. Menyebabkan saya sangat kecewa. <laughs> Mungkin tahun ini mau kecewa juga lah, tapi tak kisah. Okay, lepas tahun lepas saya kecewa, saya, saya fikir mungkin saya punya bisnes tak cukup kreatif. Jadi saya ubah banyak strategi, strategi dalam bisnes saya. Dan sampai tahun lepas saya pun tak pandai cakap lah, 
Selepas itu, saya pun pergi belajar macam mana mau cakap. Sampai sekarang saya cakap, saya pun takut lagi. Yo. Okay. Jadi kita jual punya pelolak banyak. Ada deko-deko punya pelolak, apa-apa pelolak lah. Misalnya ini tong sampah. Kita ada bagi buat fashion tengok. Jadi tong sampah ada bagi guna kreatif punya idea. Jadi asal RM2 punya barang, jadi kita boleh jual RM15. <laughs> ini kreatif lah. Macam kelusi kartun. Okay. Jadi, uh, company kita ada buat CSL juga. Uh, tahun ini saya sponsor Curtain Blind. Kita ada buat blind. Gambar salah satu ada dekat sini lah. Ada buat blind, create, uh, creative blind sponsor untuk sekolah uh, Aihua di Pancut. Okay. Tahun 2013, saya akan membuka pusat pameran lansai terbesar di Asia Tenggara. Di Nilai Cui, Negeri Sembilan. Ini new factory order saya akan buka di tahun, uh, bulan 11 ni. Okey, lepas itu saya tukar strategi, saya membuat blend. Ini blend baru saya, MK Premium. Jadi, uh, kenapa sama buat blend? Dulu saya cakap keluar, saya keluar, saya cakap saya lari nilai cuy, saya MK orang tak kenal. Jadi, tahun ini saya akan fokus dekat blend blend lah. Jadi saya harap satu hari saya keluar saya bagi nengkat saya lah saya, saya pengasas MK orang kamu kenal saya lah, okay? Ini showroom saya, Pak One Stop lah One Stop, oh kertas neng, kape, leko, okay? Inilah ringkas saya yang nak kemas saya sendiri. Terima kasih semua, thank you. Thank you, Dato Kevin Q. All right, and yeah, are you getting more excited and more excited? Okay, let us move on to now our number four finalist. Yeah, sure. Please give a loud, loud applause to our Mr. Joshua Ng to present about his entrepreneurial journey and his business. Thank you very much. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Okay, I need a stage to hold me because I'm nervous and I seldom speak English. Uh, I just now, uh, I remember uh, Adeline Fu who said that uh, she cannot speak, uh, she cannot uh, sing. I, I, I cannot sing, I also cannot speak, so that I, I need to hold the stage. Okay, I think today I'm very special and unique, I'm standing here. It's because amongst all the finalists, I'm the one who are involved is a uh, non-profit organization. But uh, I have the entrepreneurial hearts and the entrepreneurial bloods in my, in my body. So uh, even though I involved in uh, non-profit community service, uh, this is what we call creative. Because creative, uh, they don't have the limit and the borderline. So this is my community service. Uh, okay, I'm Joshua Ng. I used to be an engineer, so uh, I used to be uh, communicate with machine and the computer. So I'm not good in communicate with people, but today I'm standing here to talk to so many people. <laughs> okay, I'm the founder <laughs> for the Grace Covenant Community Care, and. Uh, I'm used to be a top outstanding young Malaysia 2010, and my wife also uh, awarded the uh, top outstanding young Malaysia in 2012. So we are the first couple in the Malaysia to get the top outstanding young. <coughs> so uh, this is some of the award, I get it. Okay, I want to share that uh, what I'm doing. I actually, I'm major to uh, people say that we are doing the orphanage, but I'm uh, standing here to share to you I major to fight for the woman right and the human right, especially for the human rights. And to the, all the audience uh, this afternoon, I have to special words for to you uh, If you want to be outstanding, you must be outstanding in young. This is the first. And everything you do, think big. Start small, work smart, and go persistence. Okay, these are the two words I need to share to you all. 
and I hope uh, to share the world towards a new era of non-profit organization in Malaysia. What we are doing now is we fight for the children, right, and the welfare. And we have a team, we have a hope, we have a vision, is give children a future, give them a hope. I'm the father of uh, 120 children. And in the future, I hope to bring all these children to being educated. I hope to further them to continue study in the university to the college. And our vision is to become an outstanding modern systematic management nonprofit organization. And what I'm doing here is I bring uh, the corporate entrepreneurial management and system into the non-profit organization is what I'm doing in the children home. Okay, first I want to say that uh, so we are the uh, first children home in the Malaysia to award the ISO uh, 9001 2008. We implement the system, the management in our center. Uh, other than that, we also have the 5S, we have the uh, organization management in our uh, children homes, and we build the excellence education system to all these orphans, abandoned children from the kindergarten, primary school, internet. Uh, education and the college to university. Okay. And we have a clean environment in our center, a healthy spirit. Other than that, we have a complete facility. And in our center, is other than that, we also uh, implement the uh, five, five S and the five R. Five R stands for rethink, renew, reuse, redo, recycle. It means that we involve the eco friendly in the children's home. This is what I'm doing. And finally, I hope what I'm doing will inspire the new young generation to motivate young little entrepreneur, change and transform in the community. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you for the number four finalist, Mr. Joshua Ng. All right. And finally, let us welcome our last finalist for this session, Mr. Mahir Goh, to present about his entrepreneurial journey and his business. Please give him a warm welcome and loud applause. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mehego. Think creative. Think creative is always very important. Um, I'm born from um, Propanko. Um, my Propanko Island uh, is a fishing village. So um, today what I'm doing is a very simple career. It's because teaching children art. I try to do some, some interest to myself. Uh, today I prepared this one, it's my company profile. So it's not like, you know, a personal, personal profile. Okay, try to introduce my, uh, my this business. We are doing to teaching children art because um, until today, there are a lot of my friends, even my, uh, a lot of people asking me, how do you what is your business? What is your business? How you can get uh, this, some like TYM in 2012, how you can get this award? Because my business is very simple. I teach children. Uh, yes, I'm, a I'm the teacher, uh, art teacher. Uh, since i 17 years old, uh, when I study, I'm doing a part-time job. It's a teaching children how to draw it. And on the time, I have a dream. I will always have a question. How come, you know, the, the times of Yamaha music, you know, Yamaha music have uh, so many franchise, and then they have in the world, they also have the like systematic, they have a grade one, grade two, and grade three. And uh, even the taken, uh, Taekwondo, you know, they also have the white type, you know, the few color of level. And why in the world we don't have uh, any children art, they're learning, they have the any level by level. And who just the level? Okay, who created this uh, uh, music? Greek and this uh, Bali, the dancing Bali Greek, who create all this the Greek, and why art we don't have? And the time and t or only is a part time art teacher. And after I graduate, I graduate already. Then I start to full time and I open my own the first art center. And then I we ask always a thing about this question: Is it possible for me to create the great like similar like Yamaha music? 
like they have the grade one, grade two, and grade three. And okay, and I start my first grow board is 1999. And at the time we not have we not call a global art yet. At the time we just call the global uh, art. Global Study House. This is my first uh, registered name. It's my first uh, center. And from there, uh, how I create the start the global art career is because of at the time I have the uh, my one person only can teach more than hundred students. When after we are great a lot of uh, students on during the time and more hundred so I hire the teacher. But every parents come to us and say, I want my children learn from you. Uh, because the teacher, because you know, on that time, teaching art is a, is a, is a more impersonal skill. It's a more impersonal skill. So, and uh, I'm very, very even a high the teacher to helping me to teach, you know, the art. But they still use their personal skill. And because we don't have any systematic art syllabus yet on that time. So from there, I start to think, uh, we have to train my teacher and become like my own, my personal skill. It's the same as my skill. So on the time I start to create, a, uh, we call the system. Then the time I learn from Yamaha music and how the great, you know, the start the great form like music and even Bali, even the Taekwondo. Okay, so I start if this career start from myself to how to solve my teacher problem. Then in 2000, 2000, year 2000, my syllabus complete. Then the time, I have an idea, I introduced myself, my, my this program, to the, all the enrichment center. At the time, we not call have the like global franchise yet. We just uh, introduced our program to some tuition center. Okay, then, then only, one minute. Eh? Okay, then only we start to call it license, licensing my program to the people. And until 2011, after two years, we already have the 40, we call it franchisee. So I will get it faster. Uh, this is our program. We're doing teaching art. So we have the, today we have the sixth level, we have the basic level until advanced level. And then we still have the addition program. Uh, our experience from the four years old to the 18 years old. And this is also our other program. And also related with the children program. And also we have created our merchandise. Today our merchandise is more than 100 items. We have our own product, all our learning material. And our endo dinner, our national art competition. We, every year we organize, uh, every year we have our own uh, national competition and represent in other countries. We also have our own uh, national, national competition. And after we finish the national competition, we have getting together, we call it international art competition. And this uh, one is our art competition. In 2011 in Vietnam, India 2010, Singapore 2009, Malaysia 2007. And this year we, all, we will hold our international competition in Bali, in uh, Indonesia. Um, this is our teacher, franchisee, testimonial. And today we are become the fran Malaysia franchisee. Okay, center list. In Malaysia we have uh, more than uh, 180 franchise in throughout the nationwide. And in overseas partner, we have the, uh, in Australia, Brunei, Cambodia, China, India, Indonesia, Myanmar, just last two months we opening the first center, Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, US, Vietnam. So today we total we have uh, around 600 franchisees throughout the world, and every week we are opening one new branch. Almost every week we open new center. So thank you. Thank you very much to Mr. Mahir Gom. All right. After listening to all their presentation, I believe there is something in your mind that you would like to know. Drag out some secret from their mind, and then hope that you could be the next entrepreneur. Am I right? Okay, great. Awesome. So, we are now actually open for Q&A session. Okay, so... We'll start with the SMS questions first and then we'll open the floor to further questions. Alright. So, let me have a quick check of the question we have here. 
Okay. I have one question here. Okay. Let me do some introductions. Um, this um, sender actually mentioned that of innovation and creativity is the fundamental of every business. Am I right to say so? But, however, he actually um, thinks that most of the business don't sustain because they don't have the strategy to do so. So, his question is basically is to ask how to make the funding less riskier and then make the business more sustainable. So, we open the question to all the finalists. So who would like to answer first? Okay, the question is to actually how to make the funding less riskier and then make the business more sustainable. Okay. Okay, so I answer first. Huh? So how to make the business uh, the business more sustainable, more sustainable okay. less less fund. So simple, start from zero. You know, okay, so anybody here like to open restaurant, example? Restaurants. Somebody, right? Okay. Please so, don't be shy to raise so up. So you, if you want to open a restaurant, you put a table at the 6 o'clock in the morning, and then you cook something in the roadside, and then you sell that. So before 9, you close the shop, Pandraya don't catch you one, because they're not yet come to work. Sure one. You see, uh, when you start to do that, you learn what is the behavior the people surrounding there. And then you start to find the opportunity, shop surrounding, where is a suitable place for you to capture your market and over there. So how much the cost? Put the table, bring a pingan mangko there. How much? 500 ringgit enough, right? So you continue to do that six months, you will find a way to continue your business in a bigger scale. So that is the most easy way. So same like, how I start to sell fruits in the pasta. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> Anyone want to start with the table and sell something? <laughs> okay, let's move on. Hello. Okay, just uh, Mr. Anna actually start with 500 ringgit. I think uh, for my business, uh, being a real estate agent, basically we start with a zero uh, investment. Why I say that? Because when I, I'm actually a very conservative person. Uh, as an engineer. So I, why I choose this line? I actually uh, choose this line because I don't have pay any capital to get any product to sell. So how I started is I go to see my friends and go and see some of the relatives. You got any houses for me to sell or how any houses for me to rent? Then they say, yes, there's a house for me to sell. Okay, the, my first deal uh, is the house in the Kota Damansara, a piece of land. So transacted at 760,000 the commission is about 13 over 1,000 ringgit. So you, you see, what actually I, I, how I, how I do it, I just hang a banner there. Okay, the banner actually sponsored from my company. So I hang the banner, put a banner there, and people call up and negotiate the deal and show up within two months. So basically, the investment cost and the return can say infinity. So when I'm now teaching my agents, all the new uh, uh, the agents who join us, join us from 21 years old, all the way to 51 years old, I teach them the same thing. You want to make, th make more money, you must think big. Okay, so we, fo we focus on the property is above 500,000 to few million ringgit. So every one deal is 20,000 to 40,000 ringgit. So that's why my agent can make millions in a year. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, from table to a banner. Now, what's next? Um, Dulu Sa start Maniaga biar masa, saya pun tak perlu kos mian. Cuma guna IC saja sudah boleh lapat stock. <laughs> yeah, yes. Saya pergi petaling strike, saya pergi petaling strike, saya pergi satu kedai, dua kedai saya cari. Saya cakap sama ambil 20 biji jam. Kos dia cuma 200 ringgit. Saya cakap saya bagi you foto stake IC, saya ambil ini kos. Lepas itu sign agreement, saya bagi jual itu 20 biji jam. Lepas jual, saya angkat lagi, jual angkat lagi macam ni. Jilo kos. Masa itu saya umur 20 part time lah, satu bulan boleh jadi tiga ribu ringgit. Tiap-tiap hari pergi kedai ke kedai, jual macam ni. Thank you. Okay, photo set, copy IC ya. Yeah. Alright. <laughs> so I want to uh, share something special in Chinese word that's Qin zi ai cai shi zi yu dao. It means that uh, everybody needs money, but you have uh, to look for the right source. 
and I'm doing the non-profit organization. I get the money from the publics. And how's I, uh, how I, I, if your things always think about the money, then you focus about the money. Then I want to share something that if you have the right attitude and you are the right persons, and the money will flow through to you to help more people. And this is what uh, I'm for the past ten years. I um, spend a lot of money to the people and I get a lot of money from the public. This I want to mention is the uh, attitude. So you have the right people, you do the right thing. Thank you. All right. So now let's uh, Mr. Mahego to round it up with a table, banner, a photoscopy IC, and then what is next? Yeah, I think it's quite agree. Yeah, attitude is very important. But I think besides attitude, the most important is how working. Uh, the entrepreneur, or I think everyone, every entrepreneur is always hardworking. So how to create your first special of money to start your business? Uh, my experience, I'm, I'm uh, from during my first job, first company. So I working Monday to Saturday. Then after six o'clock, I finish. Then I go to teaching art, teach until ten o'clock every day. Then Saturday half day start from one o'clock to ten o'clock. Then Sunday, start from 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock. So I off days only. Four after 4 o'clock is my off time. So I uh, think hard working. Then after 10 o'clock, coming back to do the part-time job again. Maybe it's a freelancer because I'm a graphic designer or before that. A graphic designer. So you do, do the part-time job as well. So from day, you only can create a fresh money and you only can start my first center. No one to pick up you. Of course, some people is very fortunate. They have a background. They have a but parents can you know support. But for I think for us, us, you know, have so we have to ourselves hardworking, hardworking. Yeah. Do you hear that? Any student from from the crowd? Can I see your hands first? Can can you can you raise yes. up your hand? Any student here? All right. So, are you actually what interested to actually learn from all these entrepreneur? So I'm. Um, I will be doing you one, um, uh, how to say, on behalf, a favor. doing you a favor, okay, to actually ask you, ask them a question that most HR people will ask when you go for interview. Yeah, what what would you like to learn from them? It's open for all of you to pick up interesting um, stories and ideas where you can Im implement in your future. Yep. Any question? All right. Okay. Um, no worries, I have this question in mind. All right, normally interviewer ask me when I go for interview. Okay, um, where do you see yourself in the next 10 years? Um, yeah, so if you, are you going to recruit anyone from here? <laughs> yeah, so. Where yeah. do you see yourself in the next 10 years? Yes. Yeah. Mm. Your future plan, yeah, just share with the student and then any, any things that we can help you with. All my employees know by year 2025, I will want to create 100 million A in my organization. So 100 employees in my organization will become a million A in year 2025. So I believe the employee work with my organization will be listed when you have three strong core values in yourself. There's uh, honesty, respect, and determination. So thank you. All right. Mr. Adrian? Yeah. The next 10 years, uh, I hope all my uh, negotiators uh, from the first, first day they actually join us, we give them training, we teach them how to, uh, to be a good person, a professional real estate agent. Uh, we hope one day all these people will become uh, our franchisee and so they will be us all over Malaysia and and they will they will stick to us to get work together with CBD properties, and uh, myself I'm thinking to move on to uh, another level, uh, into uh, value added just beside uh, real estate agency value added in terms of giving solution uh, to the people how to buy a house, especially now the houses prices are getting very very high. I believe all the students here, then after you graduated, you find difficulty to own a house, so I'm thinking to come up with a solution to create uh, a dream for you all. Thank you. Okay, thank you for Adrian Wang. 
next uh. lagi 10 tahun saya mau bersalah loh <laughs> oke okay. jadi kenapa saya cakap lagi 10 tahun saya mau bersalah dalam 10 tahun dalam berapa tahun ni saya tengah training training ikut saya punya manager ikut saya punya pekerja saya harap saya boleh membantu dia orang menjadi bos sebab ikut saya punya banyak yang tak ada sekolah punya kita training dia jadi entrepreneur, jadi million A. Ini target saya lah. Thank you. Siapa nak jadi bos dalam masa 10 tahun? Anda Boleh jumpa tahu. MK. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Alright, next, uh, Mr. Joshua. Hmm? Uh, for my area, I'm quite uh, special and unit. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm looking for more people to await uh, in the community service. In my area, I hope that's okay. It's not talking about uh, earn the money or you want to earn anything. That I hope uh, to look for somebody, more people to understand that rather to earn, you learn how to give. And I hope that uh, in this Malaysia, the community will get better and better. That's more people to know the mentality of give rather to the mentality or only to earn. Thank you. Thank you, Joshua. And let's yeah, um, go to round it up. We think, we hope in the next 10 years we can uh, we have the branding in our the Western country. Actually, today we are quite stable in Asia. So we hope in the next 10 years we can go to the Western. Even now in US, we have four centers right now, but it's not enough. So we are more focused in the US and uh, Europe, the, part, the, the country. Thank you. All right, thanks. Thanks for the question and your answer. I hope uh, this is informative for all of you, especially the students. We have different perspectives here. So um, thank you for the first five finalists. So um, how are you guys feeling right now? Overwhelmed with ideas? <laughs> yes? Well, let us take a break and enjoy this next performance. Okay, um, yes, finalists, you may return to your seat. Thank you very much for your time. So, we are proud to present to you today the winner of JTIPJ International Cultural Festival Dance Competition 2013. Please give it up for Kusari Group from National Academy of Arts, Culture and Heritage, Aswara.
Thank you, ladies. Did you guys enjoy that? That was an amazing cultural performance by the Kusari group. Let's give them another round of applause. All right, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, now let us move on to the next section. So, have you heard of United Nations Millennium Development Goal? Oh, okay, seems like some of them, uh, some of you are familiar with that. So, actually, there are eight goals to achieve by 2015, and JCI is proud to be helping to raise awareness on this. So, do you know part of the requirement of JCI CYA is for the nominees organization to comply to UN Global Compact? And what is UN Global Compact? And today, we are honored to have UNICEF representative in Malaysia, Ms. Ivana, as our panel of judge in 2013, JCI CYA. As she, could, as she could not be here today, we are privileged to have UNICEF social policy specialist, Ms. Maya, to educate us on United Nations Millennium Development Goal, UN Global Compact, and how companies and individuals like us can conduct sustainable CSR initiative to achieve United Nations Millennium Development Goal and comply to UN Global Compact. So, um, let us have some background of Ms. Maya Faisal. Okay, she is actually the social policy specialist of UNICEF Malaysia. She has master in public health, bachelor science of nutrition, bachelor in French. So, Ms. Maya actually has the vast experience in nutrition education, sexual reproductive health. HIV or AIDS, and public health programming, including youth activity, and more recently on child well-being, has attended to advocating for child rights in the corporate sector and business environment. She has worked in close partnership with Companies Commission Malaysia since 2010 to set the agenda for child rights focused CSR practice among private sectors company in Malaysia, and launched back Best Business Practice Circulars on Child Care Centre, Nursing Programs at the Workplace, and in March, one on Technical Education and Vocational Training, TEVT. As part of the work with SSN, she also supported the development of a toolkit and title, establishing a child care centre at the workplace. In her capacity as a social policy specialist, her major work in the Malaysia country office is to set the pathway of how UNICEF can play a major, weather, major added value role to the national CSR agenda within the context of an upper middle income country. Her work is based on research, strategic planning, and evidence-based policy development, and consider the best course of action to achieve results for children. So, now let's invite Ms. Maya on stage. Please give her a loud applause. There comes a time when we hear a certain call When the world must come together as one There are people dying oh, When it's time to lend a hand to life The greatest gift of all um, Thank you, thank you very much for that introduction and um, Good afternoon, everybody. Um, JCI uh, President, Ms. Uh, Nurul Afandi, JCI members, organizing committee, as well as Dr. Mazlan Kamis from Yayasan uh, Innovasi Malaysia, distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I feel like maybe the light should be turned up because everyone's gonna go into the afternoon nap mode. <laughs> and <laughs> my presentation, uh, as much as I can try, will be a listing of trying to share a little bit what um, the human rights international development framework looks like and um, hopefully be able to show you what are the links in terms of the businesses and the different entrepreneur. Um, yeah, that's a lot, a lot better. I can see your faces, so you can't sleep on me. Um, so how businesses can actually uh, play a role in creating social change. Um, so let me start. So my presentation here I called um, From Good Intentions to Significant Actions. And it's actually a quotation from the most recent 
um, flagship report from the UN Global Compact, which was released two days ago, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that later. Okay, so I'm here on behalf of the UN. I'm also here on behalf of UNICEF, and um, my representative, who is the panel judges, uh, a member of the panel judges, uh, Ms. Rivina Belmonte. Um, there's three categories of my presentation today. One, I'll share with you a little bit what UN Global Compact is about. Um, and bear with me, there will be some text, uh, but it's really just to give you a familiarity of the uh, 10 principles of the UN Global Compact. And the second part will be going through a little bit what the UN Development Goals is about. Um, for us in the UN, it's basically our, our core mandate of work. And then third and last, um, we will, I'll be sharing a little bit children's rights and business principles, uh, which was launched uh, last year to give you kind of an understanding of what are the international principles that exist specifically for children and business. Okay, so here's what I mean by text. <laughs> so the UN Global Compact is actually a strategic policy initiative for businesses that are committed to aligning their operations and strategies uh, within this 10 universally accepted principles. Um, it's actually divided in three, in four different areas, and it's guided by four different international um, frame, which is the Declaration of Human Rights, um, International Labor Organization, Fundamental of Rights at Work, um, and then the third one is the Rio Declaration of Environment and Development, and the fourth, and the most, I think also quite important, but not the least, um, is the UN Anti-Corruption uh, Convention. So I'm not going to go through specifically what all those 10 principles are. Um, you can maybe just, if you want to know more about it, go through the, their website and take a look at it. But I think what's important to stress is that um, as a, as in JCI, you are supporting and contributing towards encouraging businesses to consider and look at these principles. These are non-binding principles, but it does give you a direction of how to see your business and what it is that you can do to ensure um, your business runs ethically well, um, you know, operationally um, enhanced, and uh, ensuring that all your supply chain um, is, is in compliance, or if, you, if some, maybe we'll go beyond compliance. So in a nutshell, it's really about promoting responsible business. So it's not about going to the business in terms of, yes, we want profits, but part of that journey is also, also making sure that we're responsible in how we do our business. Okay, um, two days ago, the flagship report of the UN Global Compact came out, um, and this is the 2013 report. Every year they have a report, and one of the things that struck me a lot is um, they talked about good intentions to significant action. 